Hi everyone, my name is Eric Woodcop over here at Ironbow and today we're going to talk about container security. Here's the environment. Uh, so this is my MacBook on the left and I'm going to be shell shocking a container uh, and, and attacking it and we're going to watch the sequence of events that happens immediately after. Okay. Um, shell shock, if you're not familiar, is a vulnerability in bash 4.3 and lower and essentially if you send a custom HTTP header to uh, the victim, you can get it to, to execute commands that it wasn't expecting to, okay? So here we have a firewall of VM series. We have a, a Docker environment. We have Prisma Compute Console, which is the brains of the operation, right? And then we have XOR, which is our one of our SOAR products. If you don't know what a SOAR is, it's security orchestration. Uh, I can uh, run a playbook and enhance the data and, and do like literally millions of things. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's going to happen here is there's a defender installed on, on the Docker container and it's vulnerable. It has bash 4.3 actually, and it's an older version of Ubuntu. We're going to, uh, cat the Etsy password file and get the usernames, right? Um, I could do a lot more than that. Of course I could, you know, create a reverse shell. Um, I could, you know, W get a PHP file and then on the second attack, just run the command and get a reverse shell. We're just trying to exercise this. We want to show you, um, how we respond to attacks, right? So what's going to happen is because there's a defender installed on this Docker container, it is going to generate an alert when I shell shock it. And then it's going to send the alert to the, the console. XOR is going to pull that in, parse the JSON, run a playbook, and update uh, essentially a website. It's an ED, it's um, an instance on XOR, which is just publishing IPs and FQDNs. That's all it does, right? Then the firewall pulls that list and adds it to a firewall rule to block it or permit it, depends on what your use case is. This time we're going to block it, right? So what I'm able to do here is I'm able to block the source IP of the attacker, which is the 32104, which is me, right? I block him completely com from coming into the entire enclave. So here is my Prisma compute console. Here is my vulnerable container running bash 4.3. Here's a look at some of the things that it can do. We can do vulnerability scanning. We can do compliance checks, runtime protection. We actually will model for 24 hours the container and figure out what process it runs and what files it normally touches. And then we can actually alert on after 24 hours if there's any um, abnormalities in that environment. We have uh, layer seven HTTP WAS policy, which we're gonna be using today. Um, and here is my policy. So this is a collection. This is uh, a construct in, in the uh, product here where I can group together my containers. And I could name this something that makes sense, like, I don't know, digital or HR or Eric Whitcop's containers, right? Now, now the SOC knows who to call because my collection is called Eric Whitcop containers. Makes sense, right? So if I go into my rules, I've set this up to go ahead and alert only on Shellshock. Mind you, compute console could do a lot of things. It could block that specific attack and return a very specific HTML payload that says you've been blocked by Palo Alto Networks. Um, nice try, bad guys, right? Or I could completely, or the, the compute console could shut down the container and it won't come back up unless someone manually brings it back up. Now, maybe that's a little bit aggressive. It depends on your use case and what your requirements are, right? Uh, in this case, we're not going to leverage uh, all the controls that compute can do. We're going to exercise our XOR playbooks. We're going to show how I can block it on the firewall and uh, make sure that that source IP is not allowed anywhere in my environment. In this, in this case, it's AWS. Uh, they're not going to be allowed in this VPC, okay? Uh, before we leave here, I did want to show you the MITRE framework. I love this. So I have been hammering them, this poor container with shell shock for the last month. And these are all, these are just shell shock attacks. So initial access, execution, they've exploited the, uh, the public interface. Data exfil, yep, we uh, exfilled some data because we catted the Etsy password. We, we discovered accounts. 
Very cool. I love this. This is a new addition to the latest version of Prisma Compute. Anyway, are we ready to attack? Oh, nope. I'm going to show you my firewall real quick. It's calling the URL of the of the EDL, which is your external dynamic list, right? And this is what's on there today, right? Just a couple IP addresses, no biggie. And you'll notice I'm blocking the source. So what's going to happen is XOR is going to pull in that alert, grab the source IP, tag it appropriately so it shows up on uh, the EDL website. And every five minutes, my firewall is checking in and pulling in those IPs or FQDNs, right? All right, enough talking, Eric. More, more attacking. So I'm pinging to show you that I still have access and I'm going to this, see here, throwing a custom header and I'm catting Etsy password. Attack. Again, I'm in alert only mode. XOR is now doing its thing. Now XOR is um, pulling in that alert and updating this page. And this page is now updated with the 32104. And then my firewall should be pulling that up. And now we're waiting for the uh, pings to stop. Again, it, it, right now we're somewhere in a five minute window. We don't know how long it's gonna be. It won't be more than five minutes, we know that. So let me just pause it real quick. And we're back and you can now see that we are being blocked and we can't reach uh, anything uh, inside the environment. Right. Um, go over to the console. I see there's a shell shock alert in the, the compute console. Here it is. Um, some information here. Uh, container name, image name, the forensic message, the source IP, uh, HTTP codes. All good. All good info. Now we go over to XOR. Go to incidents. We should have a new incident here. We'll look at this one. So here we are. We're over at XOR and we are looking at a particular incident. This is from the attack that I just did, right? We talked about the, uh, the shell shock. Um, this is the initial page that is all customizable and you can, you know, place whatever data you want here. I like to see the container, uh, the host that it's on, maybe the image name. Um, it's all good info. Then what you do is you come over here to a work plan. This is the actual playbook, right? So the alert comes in, we parse it, we assign it to one of the Boston Bruins. We, in this case, we, I printed out the host name again. And now what you do with this is you just say, uh, mark as evidence. You start collecting all this data and you put it on your evidence board as you go, right? It helps enrich the, the incident and it, it can, hook into your service now. It could do like millions of different things. This is just something that I, Nicholas and I came up with. I could also change the playbook and run a different one if I wanted to. Um, but here we keep going. We do a source IP check. Now this part I totally made up. So I just popped in a Chinese IP address in here to show you what it would look like to uh, enrich um, a, a case. But in this case, it came from that 172.16.32.104, right? But this is just, it would be cool to enrich it and, you know, tell the SOC exactly who was, is trying to attack, what the source IP is. Um, here, I can go ahead and what I've done here is I've, um, I did a query to Prisma Cloud Compute and I want to see all the shell shock attacks, right? Um, so you're going to see lots of different containers in this case. Uh, where are they? And where are you, containers? Uh, they're here, hold on. right there, container name. Okay, lots of different ones, yeah, right? So uh, maybe if you're in the SOC, I'd like to know where other containers popped with shell shock, right? So I, I immediately print out all that data. Then I, I tag the IP, the indicator, with a uh, tag of deny so that it gets pulled into the EDL and then the firewall pulls that in, right? And we saw that we got blocked. We can't come in anymore. Uh, here I am printing out some more information for the SOC around the container and the, the attack. Um, just some, some environmental information. Okay, 
some information on, okay, this is the actual, this is great. This is all in AWS. So it's enriching all this data. Now the SOC is armed with some information. I know exactly what I'm looking for, right? Because I have to call and find out who owns that and respond to this attack. And this is all uh, on the way to doing that. Here is a huge file, which is all the CVEs for this particular Ubuntu trustee with a uh, bash vulnerability. Okay, CVEs, yeah, we got them, plenty, plenty of info here. I know I'm going fast, but um, okay. Now the SOC knows exactly how many CVEs are on that box and the fact that it's Swiss cheese. Um, again here, let's see, um, open this file. More CV info in a nice format, okay. And then I downloaded the logs from the defender in question. Big old file, right? So now the SOC has plenty of information. I've blocked the attack and now I need to make some phone calls and find out who owns that and why they're not following process perhaps. That's all, thank you.